Michael McKenzie just celebrated his 36th birthday three and a half weeks ago. But that birthday was his last since he lost his life in a traffic accident this morning. McKenzie was reportedly riding his motorcycle along East Canal when a bus crossing the bridge at the intersection of King Street collided into him. McKenzie flew into a wall and lay sprawled out in the street. But miraculously, there were no external injuries. And when his brother arrived on the scene, he was responsive and coherent. I reached to the scene. I get off my cycle. I approached my brother. He was responsive. I talked to him for like probably 10 minutes. I saw the first thing. My partner had a hurt on. If he had the hurt on, he said no. I saw if he neck the hurt on, he said no. I saw if he hand the hurt on, if he could move your hands, he said yes, he could move your hand, he move your limbs. Raise your hand to me, response bill. I saw if he could move your foot, he move your foot. Both left and right legs. So I saw where part of the hurt you. And that's when he said his side. And when I rub his side, I felt like a little lump. So when I felt a little lump, I said to myself, like, you know, this is not normal. This has to be some more severe than just a little lump. But while there were no external injuries, there were internal ones. And before Bengushi knew it, his brother had succumbed. My next mobile stop, and I asked the driver if he could please take my brother to the hospital because then there's still a breed, catching accident and stuff. So the driver stopped and ran the assistance. And me and two of my close friends from the neighborhood helped put him in the mobile. And that's when I realized my key was still in the ignition for my bike due to the fact that I reached on the crime scene and I jumped off my cycle with the fright, knowing that my brother was on the ground. So I jumped out the mobile to get my key out the ignition and that's when the mobile took off and then I realized that I couldn't have left the scene knowing that no one was there to give any report on my brother so knowing that he was going in the mobile I was kind of felt okay to the fact that you know he was reached at the hospital I get a last call after like five to five minutes and that's when they told me that I need to reach at the hospital now because this is the last of it, the hospital and the doctor already give up on him. They tried their best, but you know, they couldn't have done nothing because of the eternal bleeding, the hit that he took. And Bengushi explained that the driver of the Sartaneha bus that hit him told him that he didn't see Mackenzie, but that it was the left side that hit him. Bengushi accepted that his brother was probably trying to speed across the road to beat the bus, but he believes the driver is also at fault. We can't really turn back the hands of time, but if we could, like I said, if that driver would have just looked left or right for that quick instinct, when he said he hear a cycle rev, but he didn't look, he just continued driving because he have the right away. So he just continued driving, not knowing that it was a cycle man coming across. It was approximately one third of his body and the cycle was already across the road. Just his back wheel was left across the intersection of King Street and East Canal. If that driver would have just looked up that one second, he could have brakes and avoid colliding with that young man for hitting him to, so that he could have hit that wall. But apparently the driver said he had the right away, so he now have to stop. And Bengoshe says while his brother was a speedy driver, he was also a cautious one who had been driving cycles for years. He's a motorist for... Quite some time, he used to deliver for Pepper's Pizza. I don't know if you remember the little cycle that was driving around when post office used to do delivery. That's some small little Milan cycle. So from then, he used to drive those little cycles delivering for Pepper's Pizza. He owned different cycles that he used to drive around. He always in his mobile, he was heading to work at the time. My brother was a quiet person. He kept to himself. He not July, but on his birthday he just went the 7th of July. He not a really a company person. You know, he like his music. He like making stuff. He like building stuff. He not a person where he really gifted in his hand. You know, like I said, his job that served here. He like the bush. He like village. He like, he like the country life. He like the wild. You know, so that I mean, his type of stuff that he love. He leaves behind one teenage son. Courtney Menzies, 7 News.